One more sleep. One more sleep. Unless you're listening to us on Monday morning, then just a few hours. Playoffs have arrived in Edmonton. Game one, Oilers and Kings set to go. On Monday night, Jason Strudwick, Rob Brown set to go to break down the series. Welcome to Got You Back live stream edition. As always, we are coming at you from our long shot studio out here in Sherwood Park. Amazing golf, a fantastic sports bar experience. Check them out, longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z dot C-A. And as always, our show is presented by our title sponsor, Sherwood Buick GMC. The sales staff, they know what they're doing right they respect your time they get you in get you a look at the stuff you want to see oh and by the way they have stock so you can see the vehicles that you're thinking about buying highly recommend it because it's a great buying experience phil and the crew down there they know how to treat you right so mention got your back sent you it's 10 auto mall road and they'll give you some specialized pricing maybe some free details on newer used vehicles it's the big dealership just off Baseline Road on the way into Sherwood Park. Check them out online. GMCPod.com is the website. Rob Brown, Jason Strudwick, Chris Sabunia, all ready to go for our pre-playoff Sunday night pod. How are we doing, guys? Quick energy check. We were chatting before the show. I'm a little concerned. Sound felt like the, the fuel reserves were a little bit low, Struddy. Do you got an hour for us? How are we doing? Oh, yeah, I got 60 minutes, probably 75, actually, if I dig deep enough. Um, so, yeah, bit busy week. I ran a D-man camp this weekend. My sons are in some activities, and so not a lot of sleep at either end, uh, but a lot a really good camp. The kids uh, had a good time, and uh, coaches were into it. So, yeah, good, good weekend, Brownie. Yeah, a little tired. A lot of hockey school this weekend, a lot of pubs. Went and saw a live band, oh. sat out on a deck, had a couple drinks. A little tired. I took full advantage <laughs> of no Oilers this weekend. Full advantage. But my focus is here. This is I'm now focused. Playoff focus starts right now. Right, right now. I've not focused yet. This this is the moment I'm turning on. They say you can't turn it on for playoffs. You gotta like always I'm I'm turning it on. It's a light switch for me, Shoggy. I'm yep. ready. Well, uh, so for me on Saturday, I uh, took the day off. A whole bunch of family in town. We had a, a funeral service for my grandfather who passed away uh, probably about five months ago, just before Christmas, and uh, finally got to the service. It was a wonderful day. Uh, lots of great memories. He was an amazing man. Um, passed away on his 98th birthday, which I kind of thought was a little baller back when it happened. Like, man, he had a great run. Goes out on his birthday. Uh, was just a spectacular man. Soft-spoken. The kindest man you'll ever meet. And we had a lot of fun kind of honoring him uh, on Saturday, guys. Well, good for you. And yeah, it's special. He's smiling down at you right now. And this yes. is the year the Oilers. Yeah, the Oilers win a Stanley Cup for him. There you there go. You go. We said it on air. <laughs> He's picking the Oilers. I guarantee. I guarantee Grandpa's picking the Oilers. All right. Lots of news today from practice. Uh, so let's get to our breakdown, guys. Brought to you by Adrenaline Diesel, Edmonton's heavy-duty diesel truck repair shop, performing services like oil changes and engine swaps, overhauls, modified engine work as well. The crew over there are there to get your truck or trailer in great shape like it's right out of the factory. Drop in. Or check them out online at AdrenalineDiesel.ca. So let's rip through the lines from today, gentlemen. We're going to hear from Evander Kane. Um, you know, some interesting comments. Kind of shined a little bit of light on precisely what he's been dealing with injury-wise, which I thought was interesting. But lines today, top two stay the same. Henrique McDavid and Zach Hyman. Nugent Hopkins, Leon Dreisaitl, and Warren Fogle. Now, Dylan Holloway... Remains on the third line with Ryan McLeod and Corey Perry. He's been playing there uh, since being recalled. Evander Kane, who didn't skate yesterday, was on ice today, guys. Left wing on the fourth line. Sam Carrick in the middle. Matthias Janmark over on the right. If these lines hold, it means that Connor Brown, likely the odd man out, along with Derek Ryan, as far as the regulars go. So... Uh, we're going to hear from Evander Kane in a minute, uh, Brownie, about his injury and such. But what did you think when you uh, heard those lines today? Well, I, I think that there's a little worry about Evander's health, what he's capable of doing. He hasn't practiced, hasn't played until today is the first time he's been on the ice. He's a guy that you would expect would be in your top nine all day long, and a lot of people think should be top six, mm -hmm. especially come playoff time. Uh, to me, 
he's on the fourth line and Holloway, Holloway's been promoted is they're not sure they can get 16, 17, 18 minutes of Evander Kane and what the, the expectations of what he's capable of doing. And because of that fear and because of the way Holloway has played, they want a, a safety valve in there. They want someone, okay, if Kane's not at his best, well, Holloway deserves to be on the third line, so let's get him in there. So uh, we'll see what Kane has. I've had sports hernias, and I know what it's like. I've had surgery, so it is discomfort, and it is a pain. So he's playing through something right now, Evander. My first thought, this is a huge blow to the Oilers' quest to win a Stanley Cup, right? He, he haven't even played a game yet. And he already is questionable. And and these don't just go away. I, mm-hmm. I, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure that this isn't like a sore elbow or a bruise or a, you know a quad injury. This is something that's there until it's, I believe, rested or completely fixed with surgery. So if you're an Oilers fan, this is a big, big uh, bad news thing prior to the playoffs even starting. And I, yeah, so I, it's it's it, this is a blow. This is a blow to the team. Well, so Shogger on this. So I have had sports hernia. Okay. And I had it in Pittsburgh. I had on both sides. And the only way for me, you had to have surgery. Mm-hmm. And if you have surgery, you're not playing for a while. It's very, after the surgery, it's painful. So when I had it, I had to wait till the end of the season, have to have the surgery. So this rest isn't going to make it go away. A hernia doesn't go away if you give it a, a five, six days rest. It's always going to be there until he has surgery from my experience with it. And I don't know how it'd be any different uh, for anyone else with a sports hernia. So this is something obviously said it's been bothering him for a while. And my guess through my experience is eventually he'll need surgery for it, but they're going to wait till season's end. Now, the other thing I would have thought is if it, let's say it happened at Christmas, why not get it done then throw them on the old LTR and then bring someone in? Yeah, that a lot of me, people are asking that, Struds. Yeah, that, that to me is like it just because then you get double the player. He would have been back. What is the ret- return time? Is it a month and a half, two months? I, I don't know. I'm I'm just guessing. I don't even I don't even think it's that long, Struds. I mean, the first weeks, it, you, like it, it's very very uncomfortable after yeah, the surgery. Sure. But yeah. I don't think it's. I mean, for, Peter Angel just had his appendix taken out, and he's back skating and might play right away. So, and that's worse than what I had. So. Uh, yeah, I, I I questioned that too. I was wondering why that didn't happen. Yeah, so the idea that the doctor said, look, this is a sports hernia and it requires surgery. If you perform surgery on him, uh, you'll have him back better than ever in a month and a half and that the owners chose not to do that. That seems really odd. I don't know that that's the sequence of events. I don't know that that happened, but I think that's a fair question. Kind of like, oh, what? You know, how did that play out that way? And why wouldn't you have maybe taken advantage of some some of the LTIR stuff that we all know is is hanging out there? Now, players want to play, and Evander Kane is a competitor, and he wants to play. Uh, and he, he talked about wanting to be in the lineup. Interesting media availability with him today, gentlemen. And after not skating yesterday, a bit of a discrepancy. Like, Kane, I, I started the scrum by asking him what the chances were he was going to play, and he said, I don't know. Then we asked Knobloch, and Knobloch said, it's looking really good. You know, we expect him to play. So a bit of different answers there. But I think it's worth listening to the whole interview with Evander Kane today, and we can kind of read into some of what uh, he's uh, what he had to say about his injury. It's been it's nice to uh, finally get some rest a little bit. I've been dealing with a sports hernia kind of all year, so um, it's just uh, getting worse and worse. So I thought it would be good to take a week off for the playoffs and try to see uh, see how I can feel. You play all year kind of waiting for this. Is it a little bit, a little bit frustrating that it's flaring at this time? Well, it, it, it's been flaring all year. I mean, it's um, it's uh, just something I've tried to manage um, kind of the whole year and uh, do what I can um, to feel better. But, uh, you know, it's one of those things that uh, it just requires some some time and, and uh, some, some time away from skating. So um, got that in this week finally. Um Looking forward, I feel. Does it limit your ability to, I mean, we all know the type of game you can play in the playoffs to, to bring that physical game? Does it well, I mean, it doesn't affect my shoulder or my uh, my upper body uh, to a degree. It's, just, it's really just anybody who's had a, that type of injury understands like it's more skating and quickness and agility um, and quick movements um, that really... Uh, which I really didn't wasn't aware of until I've dealt with it now um, can really affect you. So uh, for me, it's uh, something I was just kind of learning to deal with. Um, obviously, always wanting to play and stay in the lineup, but uh, you know, God told. Me- 
uh, the other day in Vancouver and uh, really didn't feel good. So, um, or after the game in Vancouver, really didn't feel good. So, uh, thought I'd take some time off before the playoffs and, and see how I could feel. You know, you're always been known as a goal scoring guy in the playoffs, mm. a guy that rises to the occasion of the game. Can you come in here and, and be a different guy? Can you come in here and play your physical game and say, maybe I'm not the guy that's going to be on top, or maybe I'm not going to be the guy scoring those great good goals because it's a rule. Why do I, I don't, uh, <laughs> I would say, um, no, I mean, I'm still the player. I, I mean, I still scored um, a decent amount of goals this year. Um, I have never played on the power play here on the first unit, so that's not a new thing, Mark. Um, uh, opportunity's been more limited, but I've still found ways to produce uh, a high level for this team, so um when the playoffs roll around and, and again, not feeling great. So um, when the playoffs come around, I think uh, obviously everybody wants to raise their level of play and um, we'll see what type of, uh, we'll see how things look. There was one other question I asked him about if uh, playing fewer minutes maybe would help him with an injury like that. And he said, look, my minutes have been down all year and you know, the, this injury doesn't affect the number of minutes that I can play is basically what he was saying there. Brownie, did it seem odd to you that he just straight up divulged the injury right before the playoffs? been a reporter for a long time normally it's a fist fight for us to find out what's going on with players but i mean clearly this has been frustrating for him i i was surprised um a lot i've been on teams where they've told you you're not allowed to tell anybody mm -hmm. what's going on having said that normally when the reason you don't divulge injuries is you don't want to put a target on it i got a bad hand i got a bad shoulder i got a bad back i got a bad foot and then the opposition hears that and they target it they slash it or cross check you um somebody dealing with a sports hernia there's not really anything that you can target you can't say i'm going to go out and cross check sure. you in the the groin area or in the in the, the abs and so um it was yeah i i was surprised when that came out but um it's not going to affect how the other team is going to play against him um but it 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 will affect the how you feel on the ice it 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 tweaks it pulls it you get pain at weird times, and as he said, it's when you the movement. That's when it, all of a sudden you go from one side to another quickly. That's when you feel it. Now, I was a horrible skater, so I wasn't very powerful when I moved, <laughs> so it didn't seem to affect my skating as much. That guy but skates a, like he has a sports hernia. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I had one my whole career, uh, but I would imagine it would hurt him because he's a powerful skater, so he would be using more of that. But um, I agree with Strads. I think uh, a healthy Vander Kane makes his team a much better hockey club. And I do believe with Holloway in the lineup, they are a little concerned of what kind of minutes they can get out of Kane and the fact that he hasn't skated all week other than one day. What do you think, Strudz? Yeah, I mean, I can't add more, much more than you said, but I, if, if it's been bothering him all year, I'd love to know why it wasn't dealt with December, November, January, whatever. Like it's, it's done, it's dealt with your back and you're healthy. So, um, yeah, I just, you know, I don't know if there's, there must be different severities of them. I'm not sure, but this, Oilers fans, this is an issue. This is an issue prior to the puck dropping in game one because if he's not 100% and another guy in our in, that we've talked about in, in our collection of top six or top nine players goes down, now you're down two. And mm. that is now you're, you're getting in dangerous territory because you lose a third, now you got a big problem. So this is a bad start, guys. Bad start here. Hmm. Interesting. Well, one man sports hernia is another man's opportunity, and Dylan Holloway maintains his position on that third line. Chris Knobloch today will get back to the Weiss Johnson sound box here, and we will uh, remind you that they are offering $200 off their Fantech HEPA filter system. Be proactive. Keep the air in your home clean, because if we got another forest fire season like years past, the filtration system helps take the smoke out of the air in your home and it'll be especially helpful for those with respiratory issues. So contact Weiss Johnson for this great deal by visiting Weiss-Johnson.com today. Touch slow. Uh, Chris Knobloch asked about Dylan Holloway's play and if it gives him a little bit of breathing room with Evander Kane because Holloway has been doing a nice job in Kane's spot on that third line. The way Dylan's playing, it does give us some flexibility with our lines. 
Um, Dylan's been playing outstanding with his energy, his tenacity, being able to uh, break up plays with his forechecking and um, contributing a little bit offensively. Um, that, yeah, that's a nice uh, addition for our team right now. And uh, where the lines are going to be, I'm not sure. You know, obviously, Vanner's a, a, a competitor, a guy that you want in the playoffs, physical presence. Uh, you know, this year, 20 some goals through uh, not being 100% through all the year. And, you know, how are you not going to? use that um, to our advantage. So, you know, we'll be um, mixing matching a little bit, but um, right now we're just being cautious with the Evander, having the amount of time he's had off, but uh, we'll see how he's going to play. In Brownie, do you believe that if, if Vander Kane were completely healthy, that Holloway would not be in the lineup, that they'd make a different decision? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's what we talked about for the last few weeks, that Evander Kane and he's on your top nine. And then you have to decide if you want Holloway as a fourth line player. And the problem for Holloway playing on your fourth line, they get about five, six minutes of five on five play. That's it. Mm -hmm. And then he doesn't play power play. He doesn't play penalty kill. Having Evander on the fourth line, all of a sudden Holloway's elevated third line. Now he's getting 12 minutes, 13 minutes. You don't have to look for extra ice time for him. Um, the two best players for the Oilers down the stretch were Holloway and Fogel. And Holloway, you talked about, can Holloway put himself in the conversation? He did, and because there's a tweak to Evander Kane or just simply that they want him in the lineup, he's earned the right to start game one. He has been excellent, and now it's a step up. As you and I know, we watched part of the Winnipeg game today. It's much faster. It's much faster when you get into the playoffs. Uh, Holloway's got the speed. Now you just got to think the game is fast because you don't have time, and the LA Kings will make sure of that. And Strud's the decision is Connor Brown at this point. D do you agree that... You know, if Kane were were on a third line, that the decision might be different on Holloway. And what do you think about it being Brown? Yeah, I first off, I do think it would be different. I think he'd be out. But I don't think none of us made the point. What an opportunity for Dylan Holloway to solidify mm -hmm. his NHL career. This is people would kill to get this opportunity right now in front of him because if he plays well, that's his spot. You know, I don't, I don't know if Kane can get better or whatever, but right now you start game one, you play well, guess what? They're not changing lineups in the playoffs mm -hmm. if you're playing well. Like, you are in that spot. So huge opportunity for him to set his course on, in the NHL for the next number of years with a good playoff run here, no matter how long it is. Um, yeah, I'm surprised Dylan Brown, or uh, Dylan Brown, that uh, Brown came out. I didn't think it'd be Brown, but it, you kind of go through the process of elimination, right? You, you trade it for the center, and he's in there. Uh, Kane, if he can play, you want him in there because of his what he brings. And then uh, Janmark is a very steady, trusted player by the coach. So it's not that he's done anything wrong. Brown's just out. That's how it works. Sometimes good players don't get to play uh, on good teams. Well, and and what do you think, Strud's, about Derek Ryan, uh, about Carrick in over Derek Ryan? Are you okay with that? Because there are some fans that are a little bit frustrated with that too. They feel like Ryan maybe a little bit more uh, experienced and versatile, I would say. Skate's probably a little bit better too. He probably does. A um, little bit bulkier player, a little heavier player in Carrick. I mm -hmm. believe that Derek Ryan will have a, a song to sing in this playoffs. Like he's gonna have a he's gonna have an impact. Um, so you know, it's when you're on the fourth line, it's always kind of you're interchangeable. Well, I'm, mm -hmm. Sorry, that's not fair. You can be brought out and, and taken in. Like there's not as much steadiness there. So um, I think Derek Ryan understands that. But I, I like make no mistake. I think Derek Ryan will have an impact on these playoffs. It's funny. I've I've been on the fourth line, Struts. We were interchangeable. You can you can say <laughs> you don't have to apologize. And Carrick's in, I believe, because they're playing the LA Kings. Carrick's bigger, more physical. I think they want that. We talked about lineups based on who the Oilers play. I think because the Oilers are playing the LA Kings, they wanted a bigger, more physical centerman and a guy that's you know can win faceoffs and pretty good at it too. Yeah, and we have Gager in here, Brownie. We're not available. You are interchangeable. Like there's very little drop off when Joaquin Gage sits in your you know seat. What? We know that Connor, Connor Brown isn't the only one that's a healthy scratch <laughs> once in a while. I know there's other Browns that are too. Leon Drysaddle asked him today about uh, what he's seen from Dylan Holloway. Yeah, lots of confidence, uh, lots of really good hockey. Um, exactly what you want from a kid um, coming up. You know, you want him to make 
the coach really uncomfortable in, in, in making a decision, right? Uh, essentially, um, and and he's he's done that. He's he's played I don't know three four games. How many games has he played? Uh, he, he was fantastic in all of them. So. Um, I don't know if he's going to play tomorrow or not, but either way, um, you know, I'm sure he's going to he's going to get uh, some looks, uh, you know, down the stretch here. All right. Coming up in our next segment, we'll dig into the L.A. Kings a little bit, their lineup, how we feel about the matchups, the style, all of that. We'll break that down uh, before we do that, though. Let's get to our relentless player of the day. Some uh, NHL finals already in some really good games today. Canucks currently in progress as well. So strutty has got our relentless player of the day, even though the day is incomplete. And it's brought to you by You Can You Services. If you're looking to hire entry level staff for your company, You Can You Services trains youth in pre employment skills to help get them ready, willing, and able to join your team. Check out www.youcan.ca for more information. Struddy, what do you have in mind? Keeping in mind that the Canucks aren't done yet. Uh, yeah, no, <laughs> that's fair. Uh, I'm going to go with a player that I really like, like my second tier. Uh, like I love Miko Rance and those types of players, but that second tier guy that I would love to fill out the middle of my lineup, Adam wow. Lowry. Yes, Adam I knew it. That's two goals. Um, I just, I love the way he plays. There's, he just, I love the way he steps up for his teammates. I love that he's the captain there. Big fan. So Adam Lowry, two Genos today uh, in a wild game, in a wild game in uh, versus Colorado, seven six winners. Brownie, what did you think of him today, man? That was big boy hockey. Obviously, he can function like that, but that was offensive hockey too, and and like a lot of head to head with McKinnon. I thought he was excellent. I, well, I look back a few years ago. One of the main reasons the Oilers lost to the Jets is when Lowry was on the ice. Mm -hmm. The Oilers got nothing going offensively. He is that good a hockey player, and the offense is an added bonus because he's going out there just to mess with your head defensively. He's giving you nothing. You got to work for it. I, I'm a huge fan of Lowry as well. He makes the Winnipeg Jets a contending hockey club. Just a beast. He's so big. He's strong. Yeah. He can fight anybody. Like, he can be imposing. That guy is just absolutely tailor-made for playoff hockey. And Strads, I'm not, not loving my Winnipeg my Winnipeg Colorado series pick after watching the game today, buddy. I was, I heard, are you kidding me? Resonating in my ears. Like Brownie, yeah, that's what he said again? to me the other night when I picked what, uh, Colorado. Yeah, what did you say again? What was it? Just remind Nathan me. Nathan McKinnon is McDavid like this season and can propel a team to a series win. Well, that, that's that. true. He is, yeah, I, but Georgie, the fifth in net, is uh, Andre Red Light Rassico this season, and he can propel a team to a loss. Yeah. Tough one. Tough That's one. a great counterpoint. I know I'm going to be eating that one. Uh, although I am very interested to know, Brownie, if during Brownie points tonight, maybe I earn a few back. Because I'm just saying, you took some away from me, and I'm just wondering if maybe I've earned them back. So Brownie points and takeaways are coming up right after this break. The fastest growing male grooming company on the planet just got even better. Backscape 2.0 with a revolutionary friction fit handle makes the razor easy to pop in and out to shave not only your back, but anywhere on your body. And those hard to reach spots just got even easier with the new ergonomic design. Backscape's new titanium shave head makes for a smoother, more comfortable shave that respects your skin. Backscape 2.0, stay smooth, gentlemen. On paper, my life looks exciting. In reality, not so much. Every day it's same old, same old. Clock in, clock out. Then I discovered Play Alberta. I can play casino games anytime. Bet on any game. And buy lottery tickets anywhere in Alberta. I think my spleen is ruptured. All right, let's get to our takeaways brought to you by Martin Motorsports. Feel the electricity of the playoffs with zero electric motorcycles exclusively at Martin Motorsports, pushing technology and design limits. These bikes redefine riding. Check those things out. Sign up for their free demo day event in May and take one for a spin yourself. Stop in at their South or West Edmonton locations to see the zero electric motorcycle lineup or visit martinmotorsports.ca to reserve a demo today. Those things look badass, man. That would uh, looks like a ton of fun. 
Okay, gents, uh, let's dive in a little bit to the Los Angeles Kings. Let's go line for line. How we feel the Oilers match up against these lines. Um, and the Kings uh, had a full practice yesterday. They took, I think they practiced quick today and then jumped on a flight. But as of right now, uh, Struds, Brownie, uh, Leferriere, Kopitar, Kempe are their top line. You know, more Dino Arvidsson is uh, another one of their top lines. Fiala, Lizot, and Lewis. Then you got Byfield, Dubois, and Grundstrom has been pulled off of uh, LTIR, inserted back into the lineup. People will recall he scored a couple of big goals in, in one of the game's last uh, playoffs against the Oilers. So as I read those lines out, Struds, their their strength is their spine through the middle. What do you think depth-wise? How do you think they match up against the Oilers here? Well, I think they've got good depth um, up front. I do like – I mean, obviously, we have we you talk about Kopitar, Dano. Lazat and then Dubois at center. Those are four pretty decent sized centermen. They can play, make plays. Um, they've got some speed on the wings. They can score. Uh, you know, Byfield's numbers kind of come down a little bit. I, th- I looked it up. I think he's only scored two goals in the last two months. And one of those came the last game of the year. So I mean, that's, mm-hmm. that's, uh, it's, it's a long time. So his, and his minutes have kind of, he was up 18, kind of 19 minutes. I can see now he's 16 to 12. But I, I would be interested to see what he does in the playoffs. And if Pierre-Luc Dubois and he can have a good duo, that's a big, heavy set of forwards that can play really well together. So those, to me, are, are, are two real wild cards because of the, the kind of the downplay of Bifel and PLDB still trying to find his uh, groove, Brownie. Yeah, I, I, I think the, the Kings are very good up front. I, I do. I think they've got depth. they got some speed. Uh, I love Kempe as a player. Like, he just seems to score big goals at all the right times. Uh, I've always been a huge fan of Arvidsson. He's about five foot six, but he plays like he's six foot five. Um, I, I've seen the Kings when when they forecheck, they're a very good team, and sometimes they get pulled away from that and they play their one three one or whatever it is. Uh, and I think that takes away of one of their strengths because they do have speed that could get in on the forecheck and create turnovers. I do believe uh, they brought they they went and got Dubois to try to beat the Oilers in the playoffs. They knew eventually they're going to have to, if they want to go on further in the playoffs, they're going to have to get through the Oilers. So they went out and got Dubois. Dubois has been a huge disaster for them. Gave up three good players for them. But if he has a good playoff, he's capable of way more than he's given them. But I do, I the, their forward group isn't as top heavy as the Oilers. They don't have superstars, but they certainly do have depth. And I think that if you look at their lines one through four, uh, very capable. Uh, there's not a huge difference, not a big gap between the first and the fourth line. So, yeah, I, I like the LA Kings forward group. So let me ask you this, and, and I did ask Chris Knobloch the question today. Um, if you look back at the playoff wins that the Oilers have over the last couple of years, in both series, McDavid and Dreisaitl started the series on separate lines and didn't <laughs> go great, and then they put them together, and that's what propelled them to, to win the series. Certainly happened last year. They won the series with those guys starting games on the same line. Yet here we are, reset, third year in a row. The formula seems to be those guys have to play on separate lines. And Brownie, it feels like we'll see them together at certain points. But I would suggest to you that if they are starting games on the same line again this year, it means something has gone wrong. (laughs) So I guess I wonder if that's the way you're getting across the finish line in this series, two years in a row, why wouldn't you start there? I know the, I know the answer, but I got to ask the question because the evidence is there. Well, my pro for playing them together, the LA Kings back end is it's top heavy. Drew Doughty's all world. I'm a huge fan of Drew Doughty. And he lives for the competition uh, of playoff hockey. He, he can't wait to go ahead against McDavid. And he knows that sometimes he loses shifts, but he loves it and wants it. But they have, when you get to their third pairing, their third pairing cannot handle Connor. And if you put Connor and Leon together, when you're on home ice and you can get the matchups the way you want, and you can put Leon and Connor and Hyman or whoever you want with them and just start them every time they have their third pairing out there, it is a comp- it was a huge mismatch. Vegas, you play against Vegas, Vegas top top pairing and third pairing, quality. They're, yeah. they're not afraid to play. But there is a difference between the LA Kings' best defensemen and, and their, their third pairing. To me, I, mean, I think that's how the Oilers took advantage of them the last couple of years. They just started getting mass, matchups and just mismatched what the LA Kings could throw out in their second and third pairing. So if I'm the Oilers, 
I'm going to Connor and Leon early in these games at home and taking advantage of the matchups when the LA Kings put out their third pairing defenseman. Hmm. They nailed it. I mean, the, 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 the underbelly, the weakness is the D and the goldies. And, and you know, mm-hmm. I think that's, that's, I'm not, you know, revealing state secrets here, but I think that is the truth. <laughs> so you've got to get after these guys and you have to make them suffer. Those, those D men, you have to suffer. They have to, you know, and it's hard to make Drew Dowdy suffer, but if you continuously make him turn around, go make decisions with the puck in his own end, uh, you know, you're able to finish checks. If he tries to jump by him, you give him a little bump so he can't get by you. It, it eventually wears a team down over five, six, seven games. So uh, their four group is solid, but the D is where you find the weakness in the goalies. And that's the Oilers have to prey upon that. And that means you don't spend a lot of time in your own zone. Try not to spend a lot of time in your own zone. You get in the offensive zone and you cycle, interchange, D to D, all that kind of stuff. Make them suffer in their zone and get their heads spinning. And eventually, I think they'll crack. So reasons for optimism, if you're a fan of the LA Kings, let's say. The things they're telling themselves, why this year could potentially be different. So Byfield, Mm -hmm. uh, although he didn't finish great, right, has a chance to impact this series where he was not there. He was not there yet uh, last season. This year he could. Uh, The other thing they have is a healthy Kevin Fiala right from the start of the series here, which they did not have last time around as well. So, you know, a couple of, you know, some things are different, right? Gavrikov had a good year, like good year. And um, yeah, Arvidsson, same thing. Strud's great point by you. So there are reasons for the Kings to to have a little bit of optimism heading into this series, Struddy. Yeah, there are. I mean, I think you look at the up front, those centermen can compete with the Oilers center and they Mm got to, like those guys are going to have to be really good defensive in their own zone. Really good. Just hold their own and be solid, help the D-man out. Um, especially as Brownie outlined kind of that, that the bottom end of their, their, their back end. So I believe that that is a reason to be optimistic, but you know, if this, if the owners play it, get through the neutral zone, as we know, LA likes to play that kind of defensive style and just play in the offensive zone and, and, and win the, the O zone time. I think, I think eventually the Kings will break. Well, and if you're an LA fan, there's two other things that give you hope. The LA Kings are a very good defensive team. Uh, goals against average on the, the course of the season. They're good. They only, they're only five points behind the Oilers in the standing. So they had a good season. Mm-hmm. And another one is, I believe they have the second best penalty killing in the, in the league. The Oilers win a lot of hockey games with their power play. The LA Kings, if, if they're able to keep the Oilers, uh, you know, 20% or less, if they're able to, that goes a long way in them having a chance to win the series. The Oilers are the better team, but mm-hmm. the better team doesn't always win. What the LA Kings need is they need a goaltender to steal a game. When you're an underdog, your goaltender has to steal you at least one game in a series. One game where you're not as good as the other team, but you win. Aiden Hill did that last year against the Oilers. He yep. stole a game. I don't know. This is the, Now, this is the problem for me if I'm an LA King fan. I don't know if Cam Talbot can steal them a game. I love Cam Tell, but I remember what he, the things that he's done here. But I'm not sure. If the LA Kings would have went out and got a Bennington or someone at the deadline, we'd be having a different conversation about the LA Kings. They didn't. And I think their big weakness against the Oilers is, is going to be in net. I believe the Oilers have an advantage in net. Yeah, I agree with you there, Brownie. The other thing, too, like Kopitar and Deneau, really unique like real good one-two punch in terms of two-way centers that can play against top-end players. The other thing Strud's about playing McDavid and Drysaddle together is, like, you 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 basically only play them against one of those guys. So rather than let each of those guys take one of McDavid or Drysaddle, you put them together and you say, okay, Dino, like, unless they're going to play Kopitar and Dino together, which they're not going to do. So does that maybe play into it a little bit that if you when you do blend those guys together, you're you're putting them out there against one of those defensive centers. Yeah, no, for sure. And that makes sense. But I just wonder, there's a new coach there now. And if I believe if the Kings had the same type of game plan, it hasn't worked for two years. I know. And he was there for those years. Like he was there. He was an assistant, right? Mm -hmm. So how do you change that? How do you, or do you change it? Like, do you approach it differently? Like, I, I don't know. I just, you can't expect different results for doing the same thing over again against basically the same type of team. I know there's been players change on both sides, but Generally speaking, the same type of team. I think the Oilers are actually a deeper team than they were the last two years. So how do you beat them if you do the same thing over again? So I I, I wonder if they have any kind of wrinkles set up um, mm-hmm. for this. Like I, I, you know, if I was that coach, it, it, it is a bold statement, but you put Pierre-Luc Dubois, 
Quinn Byfield and Grunstrom up against Leon. Say, buddy. Go do it. Good luck. Yeah. You were Good brought luck. here for a reason. You yeah, were brought here for a reason. Your time. This well, is your time. And then Kopitar against, uh, maybe not, I don't know, maybe maybe Juno against him. I don't know. Like, it's just anything. Anyways, something different than we've seen because what they've done hasn't worked. Well, the other thing, too, it, it, the Oilers' best, the best part of the Oilers is their offense. They're top-end players. Where And I, I was that's what I was in junior. Where the top-end players are the weakest, they're in one zone. So for me, if, if I'm playing the Oilers, I, I'm getting pucks in deep and I'm forechecking hard. I'm not going into a very defensive no. presence in the neutral zone. When, we, when teams that have had success against the Oilers are ones that have forced the Oilers to make mistakes in their own zone, below their goal line, catching the Oilers, sneaking out early. That's how you beat the Oilers. If you just yeah. continue to let them to come at you in waves, yeah, you're going to stop Connor from going end to end because you have all those guys in neutral zone, but you're still allowing them to come out of the zone and dump mm -hmm. it into yours and get a four check going. So if I'm playing, if I'm coaching the LA Kings, I'm much more aggressive on a four check and trying to beat the Oilers that way by creating turnovers in the offensive end instead right. of just allowing them easy access. Out. And it's not that they don't four check. Let's get this straight. Nope. Like the one, three, one, neutral zone system so yep. when there's a controlled breakout for the Oilers let's say the Kings dump the puck in and change that's where the one three one comes up and the Oilers have to work mm -hmm. their way through some mud but Struds they will forecheck they do forecheck during these games it's not like it's non-existent from their games and they have to against this order team they do but I think if there's a choice to try to forecheck and they're not sure they can get there they'll back out yep. yeah and so I, they I err on I, the side of yeah yeah it is so boring I hate I hate <laughs> playing in that system I hate it it's just painful, absolutely yeah. painful, and uh, it's not fun. I don't know. You don't. How do you motivate for players? Hey guys, I got a great idea. We're gonna sit back. What? We're gonna <laughs> sit back. We're not gonna attack. We're just gonna counter punch. Counter punch. That's not much fun. It's a bit of a nightmare for a guy like Drew Doughty. I would have to think. Um, yeah, I mean, he's got to be on board. I mean, he's he's been there a long. He time. is. I, I don't get like I. I just it's just boring. And yeah, maybe it works. I. I don't know. I, I just, I know I didn't, I didn't have a voice. I had to be like, yeah, we'll do it. Sounds great coach. But <laughs> in the back of my head, I'm like, this sucks. You weren't invited into the, the deeper strategy oh. sessions with the, oh, okay. uh, Let's with get the in here. what do you think of our, 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 cause we played with Vancouver one through yeah. on the neutral. End. And it was crazy. All the left demon were the one we had to stay back. So I had to go back and get the puck. Why do you want me to have the puck? That is not what I do. Put me in the middle. Let me be like the wedge breaker. Let me have some fun. Oh, no. Old Uncle Strutty back there trying to pick up a grenade because they already exploded and put it back together again. It was a disaster. Uh, let's get back to the Weiss Johnson soundbox. Leon Dreisaitl today on lessons learned, maturity gained through pain, through scars, and just being a team that has been there, done that, and wants to make the better decisions this time around. Does this Leon Dreisaitl get the puck to center ice and dump it in against LA a lot easier than a 24-year-old Leon Dreisaitl did? Because of those lessons? Absolutely. Um, that, that's exactly what I'm saying. You know, you learn along the way. Um, you know, two years ago, it was probably um, a lot more individual mistakes made then then there's going to be this year right um you know again we're, we're a mature group we know how to play this team and um we know what it what it takes that being said we we know it's going to be really hard they're, they're a good team uh you know they've, they've made the playoffs for uh three years in a row now for a reason so um it's, it'll be a good series brownie over under on Leon Dreisaitl taking a frustrated slashing penalty <laughs> in either a tie or one goal game in this series. Are we going to see it or is he past that? I hope he's past it. I really do. I mean, we saw it in the regular season again. Uh, he's a very emotional player. And sometimes the emotions get the best of him. Uh, if I'm the LA Kings, I'm trying to frustrate him. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm trying to get him off his game, trying to take him to take a penalty. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say he's not going to do it in the LA series. I think he's learned his lesson. I think he's going to be disciplined and he will make them pay different ways. Struts, what do you think, bud? Going after him, <laughs> going after him all the time, especially if a game's out of hand, one way or another, I'm accidentally falling on him on a face off. I'm, uh, you know, a little slew foot. Like I'm going after this guy to kind of get him off his game for sure. Mm -hmm. hundred percent. So he has to know that's coming. Right. And he has to be mentally prepped for that. And just get away from it. And, I, and I'll give you an example. I remember when Anaheim was playing Ottawa Centers in the Stanley Cup final. And at the end of one of the periods, Alfredson was frustrated. He shot the puck right at Scott Niedemeyer. Hit him right in the chest. 
And Scotty just <laughs> grabbed the puck, threw it down, and just skated off. Didn't even, didn't even acknowledge it. So afterwards, I, I remember I was watching the press conference and a reporter, first question, Scott Niemeyer, captain of the Ducks, you know, down in Alfredson, shot a puck at you, hit you in the chest. What'd you think of? He's like, we're not, we're trying to win. That has nothing to do with winning. Wow. Like it. That was it. Like, he was just like, it, it, and it, it's so right. Like, that's one of the greatest, most successful players of his, his era. Just like, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't matter. Like, he was just there to win. And it's, so I think it's hard to bite that off. Mm -hmm. you know, a more, a mere mortal, we would have snapped but mm -hmm. that guy understood like it, it doesn't matter. He can he can shoot pucks on me all day because we're winning the Stanley Cup. That's it. I can't wait. It's gonna be tons of fun tomorrow night. Uh that was takeaways brought to you by Martin Motorsports. Time now for the best segment on this podcast. Mm -hmm. Brownie points brought to you by Hamel's premium jerky. Their world famous jerky is located right here in Alberta using prime Alberta beef. Their jerky is available in 14 tantalizing flavors, including the famous sweet and spicy. The jerky that went to the International Space Station. Yes, it did. Did you guys get your samples yet? I got mm -hmm. my samples, and that sweet and spicy is something to behold, Brownie. Did you try? Did you I have. Up? I've tried a couple of them so far. Trying to save some for our lake because that'll be snack time at the lake with a couple of beers, <laughs> but it is fantastic. Very, nice. very happy with it. All right, brownie points. Here we go. I, I can't wait till I get a tune and everything for it, too. I saw the little graphic up, but I'm pretty yeah. sure that right now. Zuby's working on it. I know it's going yeah. to be awesome. Maybe a little Rod. We've hired a composer. Something. Hired a composer. Oh, really? And they're working nice. out. Yeah. Oh, wow. I can hardly wait. Well, let's start right now with the brownie points. And ladies and gentlemen, I got a positive 55 brownie points to Shogger. Boom! His mail in <laughs> ballot yes! to get. Dylan Holloway into the playoffs. Looks That's... like, still not for sure, but it looks like it works. So 55 brownie points. Wait a minute. The mail-in ballot I wasn't working. trying to get him in. I was oh just saying if he plays gracious. well enough, he should be able to get in. That's all I was saying. I'm not on social media, but I was getting Twitter alerts on my phone. Get Holloway in. Get Holloway in. Hey, they put Holloway on the third line. This should play him more. 55, 55, all from Ryan Rashad. So, <laughs> so 55 I'll take my points. 55 points and shut up. Okay, I'm, not... I'm taking them. <laughs> I've got 100 points to the top eight teams in the playoffs. Home ice advantage seems to have worked in the first round, first game. So far, home teams are undefeated, which bodes well for the Edmonton Oilers. I'm glad I got this in before the Vancouver mm -hmm. Canucks game ends tonight as they're down 2-1, but 100 points for the top eight teams in the league. I have minus 682 brownie points to Georgie Whoa. the fifth, the poor Colorado Avalanche goaltender who gave up seven goals on 23 shots. The Avalanche looked fantastic in that game today. They scored six goals on the road. They only gave up 23 shots, and they lost. The Colorado Avalanche are not winning a series if Georgie V doesn't take off the blinders or blindfold or whatever he's wearing because he was god-awful today. And the final one, because there's been nothing happening in Oiler world, I've got one huge, huge brownie point to the Edmonton Oiler fans is we are one day away from the first day of the quest <laughs> for the Edmonton Oilers' first Stanley Cup in a long, long time. We are just one sleep away. So one big brownie point to all the Oilers fans. Are there different sized brownie points? Yeah, like there how are. do you like? Is there so they're not just all equal? Some brownie no, points. No, God no. You go to Dairy Queen and you get like the big brownie sundae and you get chocolate sauce and like that's way bigger than if you go to Grandma's house. She gives you a little teeny weeny brownie. So yeah, there's a big yeah. difference in brownie points. Or Actually, went to a bar. You know, you get a, a what is that? A schooner or a tankard? You yeah, know, like those types of beers. There's different. <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that's 100. percent So I mean, if if I had more graphics other than just the one graphic that I got right now, I'd be able to show you all of these things. I'm sure Zuby's working on that right now. Oh yeah. For me. Well, we, we should do a leaderboard or something. I just all I know is I'm back at even. I'm back at even, <laughs> baby. <laughs> that's all Thank I was like. I was going to jump in here. 682 points ahead of Georgie the fifth yeah. from the Colorado <laughs> Avalanche. But are you really? Because Brownie or uh, Shogger, it's technically an injury placement. The reason mm. he got it's it. not. Well, well, it's not. Well, well, would he be on the third line if Kane? Was I don't healthy? necessarily agree. I think mm. that. Oh, jeez. Uh, I'm not oh. sure that he would be flat out out. If Evander Kane were healthy enough to be skating on the third line, I don't know that I agree with that presumption. Um, I think mm -hmm. he earned his way in, and I think that 
you know, you, I think it's a meritocracy and I think it should be. What? I think it needs to make sense no, for your no, players. No, no, it is not oh, in sure. the National Hockey League. Who are you kidding? It should be. Why yeah, wouldn't God, it well, be? Well, there's a difference between which should and it well, is. Maybe it is. And maybe that's why mm. he'll be in. Maybe that's why yeah. he's earned mm. it. Oh, he's, he's, he's that. been fantastic. 100% he has. By the way, your six penalty killers, Janmark, Nugent, Hopkins, Fogel, McLeod, Carrick, and Henrik. Uh, Henrik. Yeah. There's your six right there. No, we'll guys, see how it goes. I, I agree with Shagar. I could see why you take out a veteran physical guy who scored 24 goals <laughs> and replace him with an inexperienced rookie who scored six goals. I that I get it. I, I never get said that. that. I, I never said put him in instead of Kane if Kane's healthy. <laughs> oh my god. All right. We'll uh we'll wait and see. I'll be at morning skate tomorrow. We'll see what it looks like. Although I have a feeling it'll be an optional, so we might have have full answers right. until uh until face off tomorrow night. Uh, it's going to be interesting. Okay, uh, when we come back, Brown, are you going to stick around for Strutty's World? You 100%. put up with your segment. You're Absolutely. His. Go, Strutts, go. All right, Strutty, you got a little hint for us, Strutts? Are we going serious? Are we going goofy? What are we doing? It's uh, uh, They're never goofy. This is a confession. A confession <laughs> oh. about something that's changed in my life. A confession? Oh, wow. I cannot wait. Zuby, roll the commercials, and then let's get to this confession. With Strutts coming up. For over 60 years, Belvedere Golf and Country Club has been delivering a high-quality golf experience to Edmonton and area. This beautiful private club located on Highway 21 just south of Sherwood Park occupies 160 acres and presents a challenging yet adventurous 18-hole design. A beautiful clubhouse, fully stocked pro shop, and warm, friendly staff truly make it feel like you belong to something unique and special. Visit www.belvedergcc.com. Long Shots Golf is the destination for both golf enthusiasts and sports fans. Top of the line track band simulators provide a highly entertaining and accurate golf experience, while a full service sports bar loaded with big screens and scratch kitchen make it a truly unique destination. They have locations in Sherwood Park and Edmonton. Experience the best indoor golf and sports bar in town. Visit longshots.ca. That's longshots with a Z.ca. When you make a mistake, heads should roll. It's not right. And I'm here, someone has to put their foot down. Now that I say it out loud, it does sound a little crazy. Guy look good. <laughs> <laughs> all right time now for deep heartfelt confessions brought to you by dlr vinyl products with locations in calgary and edmonton if you're a contracting business or contractor let dlr help you add vinyl fence to your product line see why they've been going strong since 2005 reliable unmatched service high quality north american made products it's my brothers rick runs the branch here in edmonton rob runs the branch out in calgary where we have a stunning number of got your back listeners out in calgary gentlemen big presence out there hope everyone is gonna enjoy the order playoff run out there in calgary visit dlr vinyl products.ca strutty bury your soul for us we're here for you yeah, the last couple of months I've noticed that I've had some challenges in the, you know, when I get up in the morning, I'm trying to read something and I'm like, God, I've got a lot of fog in my eyes or sleep in my eyes, right? So I'm trying to get it going. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then over the last little while, I've realized that it happens, you know, not just in the morning. Sometimes I'll be out at night trying to read a menu and I'm like, what the hell's going on here? Like, I'm like, is it, is this thing jacked up or something? And then I noticed during the day, if I get it too close, I can't see it. So I went and saw my eye doctor. And uh, he's like, yeah, you know, you're going to need some kind of prescription to read. And, uh, you know, I kind of felt that was maybe where it's trending toward, but I'm almost 50, so it probably is. But, you know, you kind of have a little bit of a hero status in your own mind, ego. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I go in and I say, all right, I'll, I'll get the glasses. So I go and talk to the ladies at the front that helped me out, my good, my good friends. And uh, I say, you know what, I want glasses that made me look like Ryan Reynolds, right? So <laughs> um, she says, sure. Uh, so she says, she says, sure. And they picked out a couple of models and I, I got them, uh, and, and I went with them. So they've been great. So that isn't really the confession. The confession is this. I've had a problem. These glasses actually make me too sexy. 
My wife put them on, I slip them on. My wife could barely control herself. I'm like, geez, take it easy. I'm tired. You know, it's been it's been a long day. So, you know, like I've had to like now it's almost like I have to hide. You when I want to read something, I have to go and hide in the closet and read. It's like a text from my girlfriend, but all I am is just trying to read a, a text from Rob Brown and Brian <laughs> so, so I'm just anyone out there who's considering getting glasses, be careful what you wish for. Because uh, these things are killers, absolute killers. Can we can we see them, Struds? Like, will you, know, you I knew have you them? Say that, and I have, I have to go find them. I don't know where they are exactly. If you right knew now. I was going to say it, then why didn't you bring them to set well, to back up with visual evidence this claim you're making that oh, you're another confession? I don't know where they are. Is right Shona now. still awake? Can I call her? Is she sleeping <laughs> uh, or is no, she awake? She's asleep. She's hey, asleep. hold on. Wait a sec. Just wait a sec. Shona. Yeah, just, just <laughs> All right, I'm so texting anyways, her right I now. I don't know where they are. I don't know where they are. That is the problem. So I'll, well, I'm looking for them. Um, I've been looking for what I can't find. But anyways, they do look amazing. Um, I'm gonna but, I'm gonna give you some advice, Strads, because I've yeah. been through everything you're go going through. Okay. Yeah. Um, when you get to our age, the glasses you need, You're but you need advice. seven pairs of them because <laughs> you start forgetting things. So first you go blind. And then you can't remember anything. So you need seven pairs of glasses, one for every room in the house. So when you walk into a new room, oh, there's my glasses. So that's your next thing. So you need more glasses. You just yeah. need more, more sexiness from you is what I we agree. need. I agree. I actually, I actually wrote a note, text uh, the, I, or the, the ophthalmologist and said, you know what, honestly, I, do you have ones that make me ugly? Because these are these just aren't working right now. <laughs> it sounds like Shona might be the one that's having seeing issues, eye trouble. It sounds like Shona might need some, some thick bifocals of some I mean, sort, Struddy. I don't know. I don't know if you guys ever had that problem. Uh, I'm guessing probably not, but still, it is it is a real problem. I will have. say so when we saw her at the You Can You Services charity event, Struds, I won't go into too much personal detail, but all, all I will say is I did not get the sense from her. That she could not keep her hands off of you. That is not the vibe I was picking up from her that night. She well, she sat at a different table when we came in. <laughs> well, I didn't have the glasses on. It's like, it's like Gregor's? Wilson. Superman's a good looking guy, but he put glasses on him. Clark Kent, still attractive. And even maybe more so because it's like mysterious. Oh, my goodness. Who is this professor? All right. What that are was... you, an accountant? No, that I'm was... not. I'm just a hockey player. He's Arrogant. Like confessions brought to you by <laughs> dlr Mono products uh strutty we will talk to you late late or er, brownie late tomorrow night after yeah. the game we'll drop a podcast after i get back home so get ready for some late nights folks and blame Bettman in his 8 30 starts or whatever the hell it's going to be tomorrow night but brownie we'll talk to you tomorrow can't wait I'm, I'm i'm glad i stayed up for the confession though that was awesome <laughs> do you make predictions brownie did you are you gonna make struds and i did the other night you weren't on that show though what do you think is gonna what are you you're going oilers here i assume but how many oilers and six oilers and six oilers right. and six but i yeah the oilers are, yeah, yeah the oilers are the better team they should win and if they don't it would be a huge upset all right talk to you tomorrow brownie all right night guys all right see you pal all right, when we come back, Struds and I are going to take a lap and then ask us anything. We'll get to the Weiss Johnson YouTube stream. Lots of great action, and Zuby has been keeping track of it, so plenty more to come here on Got Your Back, presented by Sherwood Buick GMC. Spring is here, and if you're thinking of buying a new home during the housing market hot period, contacting a mortgage broker should be your first step. Maria Gallus with Maximo Mortgages can guide you with a stress-free experience. With access to dozens of different lenders, Maria's simplistic approach and expert advice will have you ready to put an offer in on your dream home. Take the stress out of your mortgage journey. Contact Maria Gallus at mortgagesbymaria.ca. That's mortgagesbymaria.ca. The Brindley family has made it their mission to create the best tasting flavor rums on the planet. And they've knocked it out of the park with their shipwreck rums. Brewed off the small Caribbean island of St. Kitts, their spice drum is aged four years in bourbon barrels and infused with natural vanilla. Their shipwreck vanilla is blended with natural Madagascar vanilla, giving it an incredible smoothness. One sip and you'll agree, it truly is a vacation in a bottle. Available at your local liquor retailer. Please enjoy responsibly. Okay, heroes, are you trying to tough it out through a sports or life injury right now? Trying to prove your mettle by grinding through, gritting your teeth? Well, Redefined Health is here to say it's time to come on in. 
At Redefined Health, they'll high-five you for your toughness and then get to work on helping you fix the problem. Helping athletes and heroes find better balance, performance, and injury prevention, visit RedefinedHealth.com. Was it Wright Said Fred that had the I'm Too Sexy song ready? Is that who it was? I'm Too Sexy. That was Wright Said Fred, I think, right? I believe it was, yeah. We got some Wright Said Fred action going on on the stream here <laughs> strutty's uh, right said strutty uh where did one someone's even sent in lyrics struds too sexy for his glasses too sexy for his wife too sexy for the world well the world thanks is for, a bit much yeah, saying, a little yeah. bit thanks claudia for that uh lots of action around the league today let's take a lap brought to you by backscape the fastest growing male grooming company on the planet and it is now even better i've tried this new 2.0 and it's really something, man. They got the, the shave head that snaps in and out with the friction fit handle. It's pretty cool. And the new titanium shave head gives a smoother, more comfortable shave. It respects your skin. And we got a deal for you. Go to backscape.com. That's B-A-K-scape.com. And use the promo code GYB10. That'll get you 10% off. The thing's really cool. And it works. So give it a rip. And use our promo code to get yourself 10% off for all advance and deluxe. 2.0 kits. That's Backscape. Stay smooth, gentlemen. Struts, where are we going? Yeah, so a couple of things I think that we have to go through. Obviously, the Winnipeg and Avs series. I did pick Winnipeg to win this one. Uh, mm -hmm. They won 7-6 tonight. And you know what? I, I, I didn't watch. I was, I was, I was coaching. Uh, to be complete, I was coaching hockey, but I yep. kind of went back and watched the highlights and looked at the things. Um, so at first, I'm like, man, this is a good thing for Winnipeg to have won this game 7-6 because it shows they can score with the apps and not, not that Winnipeg can't score, but you think of the as is with that high power, power offense. So they were going to score a lot of goals. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was positive, but then I was like, I don't actually think this is a positive for Winnipeg because that meant their Vesna goalie gave up that many goals. And <laughs> yeah, so that, and a team I think prides itself more on being a good defensive team and not, not that the abs don't, but I think that, you know, they, they, they're, they're more of a three zone team or they like to pride themselves on that. So Thinking back on it, I think this is a win for the Jets, but maybe a um, a moral victory for the Abs that their goalie played like he did, but that they got to Hellebuck, which is something I didn't expect them to do. That's a good point. They got to Hellebuck, and they, they you know, that was supposed to be obviously a huge uh, plus in the Jets' favor. But what about the idea? I'll just play devil's advocate here. What about the idea that the Jets beat? the abs at their own game like the jets showed they can put up seven on that team and yeah. beat them in a run and gun game and now chances are struds the jets aren't going to do that again they learned their lesson by giving up a ton but still got the win they're going to buckle it down you would think yeah yeah and i i, I was kind of what i was going at a little bit just that it's you know to beat another team at kind of their game the run and gun is is great but i just don't know that that is the, the truest essence of who they are. Right? Right. I don't know if that's Winnipeg with that, but they came in playing well. Um, but if, if there was once, you can kind of go through every series and think, okay, hey, what needs to happen for this team to win it? I think that Helen Buck has to be, if not the best player, one of the best players in that series. And again, I'm not tearing them apart. It's one game, I get it. But I don't think anyone bet an over under of more than what? That was nuts. Three, three and a half goals on the Jets in that <laughs> game. Good. I think it was a bit of a surprise. Yeah, so they won, though. That's really all that matters. It doesn't matter how they get it done. But I just wonder, I'd be interested to see what who who wins the next game and who gets the lift because of that game going to game two. Yeah, wouldn't surprise me at all if they just tightened it right back up and kind of got yeah. back to a little bit more what their what their style of play is. But but a fair point by you, right? They, they got to the, the number one asset that the other guys have. And if they can continue to do that, uh, that's going to be a big break for them. Six goals in the first period. I thought I heard the broadcast say it was the most goals in a first period all season long or something like that. It was it's crazy. Crazy how yeah. many that they scored. Uh, where else do you want to go here, pal? Uh, the Bruins beat the Leafs uh, yes. see that on Saturday night. That is, and this isn't a, a beat up the Leafs fan segment. Um, I did watch that game. I thought the Leafs actually had some good moment. I thought they were a little bit too much into being physical and trying to prove they can be gutsy and all that stuff. And I get it, but it's going to be hard to win without Willie Leanander. And so reports today that he did skate on an optional skate today after game one, heading to game two. So does that mean he plays? Does it, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where it goes, but 
I think it's important to to say that he is maybe. I think it's a good thing when you skate rather than not skating between games. Yeah, for sure. And the pressure's on, man. Like, and we know we know it's going to be that way in Toronto. But holy smokes, after that result, the fact that it was so lopsided, <laughs> like, um, pressure is definitely on on the Maple Leafs in a situation like this. And it's they, there's just so much oxygen for that fire to to chew on. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> and a result like that. I mean, there's talk about Keith. There's talk about all this stuff. It's a long series potentially here. You think the Leafs, you know, can can prolong this and make this a long, difficult series? Like they kind of start slow and get better, don't they? I do not believe in any or all of their goaltenders, and that no. is a big problem for that group. A big, big problem. Um, you know, I don't know you can put all the goals at Samsonov's feet, but I think there's one or two that could have been different, could have been a different outcome. Mm -hmm. And so that is a real challenge for that group. And I think on the flip side of that, look who scored for Boston. Jake DeBrus, two goals. Good player, yeah. for sure. Good player. Not a superstar. Carlo had one. Uh, Frederick had one. So there's four of the five goals from people that you're, I mean, Again, I feel like I'm putting down Jake DeBrus, but that's not my point here. Is that not maybe the guys you expected to put four goals up on the board, right? That those yeah, aren't probably the guys. Fair. So um, that's not a good sign because there's still some pretty decent players who haven't really introduced themselves to the scoring page for the Bruins. Quaddy pointing out that the Leafs have lost five straight. I know it's not supposed to matter when you got your, your spot locked in, what you do towards the end of the regular season, but I thought there was some weird stuff coming out of Toronto the last few games. Like, um, Sheldon Keefe's comments about like I don't even know what the score is in most of these games. You know, asked if he was concerned about where the team's play was at. Ah, these, these games, whatever. I I don't know. I couldn't even tell you the score of this game tonight, let alone any of those. Yeah, I didn't love that, and I, it it seems predatory to pick it off now that they're down in the series. But I said I didn't love it at the time that he said it. So it just it just felt a little strange to me. And here they are, not off to a great start. I watched quite a I, after the others, I watch the most Leaf games. I, I yeah. find them very interesting, right? And when I watch them and I hear Sheldon talk, mm -hmm. I feel like he's maybe getting frustrated with what's going on and maybe running out of answers. Uh, now, whether that's true or not, that's just my opinion from a long ways away. And I get that. But he seems very high strung. Um, you're right. Some of his answers are not, not erratic, but just not what I think. Like it just... I like a measured coach who's calm. And I know it's hard sometimes. I get it. The media's on you every day. But just measured and, and, and in control of what you're saying. Um, and maybe clear. And I, I just don't think he's there. So I, I do think he feels the heat. Because I think a first-round playoff loss, there will be changes. Oh, yeah. He doesn't on, survive a first-round playoff loss. I can't yeah, imagine and, that. And, and whether he deserves it or not, there yeah. just there will be changes. Like, it's he's had his chance. Um I just, but again, I go back. I'm not sure the goaltending is good enough. They have a lot of D. I don't know they have the D that can get it done high enough up the lineup. And that's kind of been a consistent problem, right? You know, just, yeah. we keep talking about it. I don't know how many different ways we can frame it. Um, and it's just, they have Morgan Riley, who is a lower end number one D. I don't think they have a two. Then it kind of goes three down to seven or eights, right? That's not necessarily a recipe for what they need. A couple other results. Let's whip through them real quick. The New York Rangers, 4-1 uh, convincing win over the Washington Capitals to take a 1-0 lead in that series. And in the Battle of Florida, it was a little bit tighter, 3-2. The Panthers end up beating the Lightning. Watched a bunch of that game. It was a pretty good game. I uh, watched a good chunk of both of those games. Um, that Lightning-Tampa series, uh, Tampa-Florida series, though, uh, I have a feeling that's going to be a tight series based on what I saw today. Going to be a tough series. Going to be really tough. Um, and I think that whomever plays them after will be happy that that was a tough series. hundred <laughs> percent. And the Canucks, uh, obviously, as we speak, Canucks trailing here 2-1 to the Nashville Predators. Uh, but maybe we'll chat a little bit about that series tomorrow night in our Taking a Lap segment uh, after the Oilers and Kings game number one. That was Taking a Lap brought to you by Backscape. Okay, let's get to our Ask Us Anything segment. Zuby has been keeping track of things behind the scenes there. So hop on in here, Zuby. And uh, let's get to Ask Us Anything, brought to you by Rini Buclan, the shark of the park of Maxwell Devonshire Realty. 
Whether you're buying or selling a home, your success hinges upon the expert advice and services provided by a real estate agent. Rini is committed to providing clients with professional services based on experience, knowledge, and skills. Call her for a no-obligation quote, 780-994-0280. How are we doing tonight, Zoops? I'm doing well. I, f- I feel like a, a rookie back here. To I think Steve did the last three shows. Feels yeah. like it's been a long time for me. You've been being MIA, here, but, buds. Being here. But, well, there was one that just scheduling, it was going to be me, and then the scheduling didn't work out. And, uh, yeah, just as I was starting, as the show was starting tonight, I thought, how do I do this again? I've been thinking about a bit other of a stuff. Panic there. there were a couple minutes you sent some panic texts. You were stressed out. But it, so far, so good. It went that went smoothly on the back doorway mm-hmm. uh, to YouTube tonight. So we're Very all good. good. And, of course, Steve did a fabulous job holding down the fort while I was away. So So what do we got tonight? Let's get to it. Okay, this is, I thought, was kind of an interesting comment from Clay Verge. He said, remember how we started? Making the playoffs was going to be a big deal. Maybe that was more important than Kane having surgery. Could that have factored into the, the, the slow start, the rough spot that they were in? If the injury dates back that far to him or the team saying, we need him even at 70, 80% or whatever he was at. I understand what you're saying, and I, the problem is that we don't we don't know the details and all that. Yeah. But I I'm just gonna say this: after they rattled off the 16 or 17 wins, there might have been let's call it even two months period where they could have got it done and made sure he's ready for the playoffs. Um, so I, I again I don't know all the details. Just from the information we've heard, this is what I feel. I can't imagine there was an inflection point where the doctors were saying to the Oilers, "Hey." this is significant if he has surgery he'll be ready to go for the playoffs but we got to shut him down between now and then so you know let's have this surgery and get this fixed and he'll be back in time for the playoffs and the oilers if this was pre-trade deadline choosing not to like i i just can't imagine that would have been the case so there's a whole bunch of information that we don't have here of andrew kane revealing that it's a you know, sports hernia. And, uh, you know, and it, it was interesting too. He said, you know, I, I decided to take a week off by the end of the season and he thought it would be a good idea to take a week off by the end of the season. Struds, veteran players that have been through different injuries, I mean, at a certain point, do they kind of take control of their timelines and their, or are you, is this all at the behest of the doctors or should it be? I think it's a group decision. I really do. Um, mm-hmm. Now, again, I'm not in that room, so I, I really don't know. But generally speaking, you know, there, there's a really close relationship with the players and the trainers. Yeah. And then there's a trust factor between the players, the trainers, and the coach. Or sorry, the players, trainers, and the doctor. And then the, the coach usually goes with the decisions of those three. Unless it's something crazy, right? Like unless it's – and I don't even have an example of that. But unless it's something out there, uh, they're, they're going to kind of go along with those guys. Um, and obviously they're going to try to get the guys back as fast as they can, but mm-hmm. that's generally how it works. So I don't see, I haven't seen a lot of times where players just said I'm done or I'm out, but I think that everyone would say, Hey, no, arrest would be fine. These games don't mean a lot. Like, I think, I think it's a group decision, Shogger. Yeah. And I, I mean, you would know you've kind of been in those situations. I just, I thought it was interesting today when he said, I decided taking a, I decided taking a week off might be a good thing to do. You know, he sort of just the way he phrased it indicated that he's kind of calling the sh- making the calls on what he thinks. But I'm sure the medical staff would be involved. Bottom line, Evander Kane needs to be healthy for this team to get to where they want to go. He's a huge piece of this thing. And if taking this time off, if backing off is what's going to get him there, then uh, hey, all the more power to him. And it'll be interesting to see what he has uh, to give in game number one. Zuby, what they else? Need him. They need him. They, they do. Him I've been so saying bad. it all along, man. He needs to be this in the top huge. six. Never mind the yeah. fourth line. I, I don't want to be negative, but guys, this is a huge, huge story for the Oilers. Huge story. Mm-hmm. Um, lots of people on the stream. We got a lot of big Derek Ryan fans. Nathan Jameson says, Carrick over Ryan is ridiculous. His opinion. Black Havoc says, uh, I think they take put Carrick in there for the grit. Now, not to say that Derek Ryan isn't isn't a gritty player, but it, there's a physicality that that uh, Carrick brings. In your in your guys' opinion, do you think that would have been the deciding factor for Carrick to to start in that spot over Derek Ryan? Heavier body, yeah, I think it's a heavier body. Um, but make no mistake, Derek Ryan's going to get in. He's going to play, and he, and he is very well liked by Edmonton fans. He's had you know you think about the price point. 
the impact he's had on the team. Um, I think that he's very well liked by these fans base. And I, I don't believe he should be out. Like, but neither do I don't think Connor Brown should be out either. So that is how it works. You have good players sitting out when you have a team that is, you know, look like it have some depth. Yeah. Like for those that like Ryan, I, I understand it. You know, he I'm not sure if he is designed for playoff hockey, though. Like he gets knocked off the puck a fair amount. Uh, he works hard. He's willing to get in there. He's willing to dig. Uh, I know he's well liked in the room. Right shot, face off guy. You know can can help with penalty killing and all those things. But Carrick was brought here for a reason, and this is part of the reason that he was brought here. So I think he gets the first look, and and I'm and I'm okay with that. I would say. Some stranger says, really want to see a more disciplined Oilers team this playoff run. You guys touched on this a little bit talking about dry settle, but how much of a point of emphasis? Do you think that'll be uh, in the room leading up to game one in this series? So as far as no road teams winning? No, um, discipline. How, 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 oh. um, how I much understand. of a point of emphasis do you think uh, being a more disciplined team than previous play, recent playoffs? Well, I think it'd be for every conversation. Everyone has it. We saw the other night with the Maple Leafs, right? They, they just, they, they took a lot of penalties and get through their group out of, whack a little bit so you know if you're going to make a take a penalty make it worthwhile make it something that maybe stings or even hurts the opposing team so you know uh, uh retaliation penalties those are unacceptable it, it just cannot happen yeah 100 i got a little distracted there zuby because what i'm realizing right now somebody's messing with northern farm girl on our stream Somebody has been messing with Northern Farm Girl, and that is not something you do on this stream. She is a beacon of light and a bastion of positivity. And so uh, that's taken care of, Northern Farm Girl. Nobody messes with you on our stream. Booted for the rest of the night. Put on mute. So keep the love and the emojis and the positive energy coming. Zuby, keep it going, buddy. Okay, and sorry to Northern Farm Girl because I'm I'm following along, but I missed. No, them. you're I busy. I didn't, you got I didn't lots realize, going, buddy. I didn't you got realize lots things going. were getting out of hand. Okay, um, Penner's Pancakes was uh, referencing. He says if a game goes to double OT, then got your back. We'll start at two a.m. sharp. Is that correct? <laughs> um, okay. Um, so late. Wow. That's so late. I never even thought about what happens if it goes to OT. Has it hasn't been an OT game in the playoffs yet? Does that mean it's got it's it's where the due factor is going to be there already? Uh, don't jinx us. Just yeah. please okay. let it be. Don't talk about it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Dr. Gonzo. What time is your ice time Tuesday morning? What time are you on the ice Tuesday? Uh, 6.45. Oh, my goodness sakes. Okay. That's a.m. Yep. A.m. time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Dr. Gonzo said, what are your expectations for Perry in the playoffs? Maybe you can answer that in terms of, oh. you know, offensive contributions or do you, or, uh, or how, how do you think he'll affect the opposition? I think he understands the moment, right? He understands the moment of what it requires. Um, I think he'll be vocal in the dressing room, talking to guys what they need to do, how they need to play, what's going on, or calming the group down when things are going really well or or maybe the other way. Maybe things are sliding away. So he's been there, he's won, and he's vocal, and I think the guys trust him. He will find moments. He will find a moment to come through and I'm not sure if he's going to be able to lock down a third line spot, you know, wire to wire here. I'm not sure that he has that in him, but I do know that he's going to find some moments and uh, they're going to be glad that they have him. They're going to be really glad that they have him because he's got something that they didn't have a lot of that Stanley cup pedigree. Uh, Zuby one more, and then we'll get to our play of the day. Okay. Uh, and this is one just, I did a, a little quick research on it and found out that the Oilers have not won a game one since 2017 in the second round against Anaheim, which was a series they eventually lost. That's the, By the last way, Bob game. Stoffer was throwing a stat around today, the last home game one that they had won, Zuby, not to one-up you with a Stoffer oh, wow. stat. I think it was 90, he said, which is crazy. That's going way back. <laughs> um, anyway, so the question is then, are, are either are both of those streaks uh, going to end tomorrow? That would be my final question to you guys. Yes. Yeah. They've learned, Struds. You can't keep making this mistake over, and you can't keep backing yeah. your way into series over and over again. McDavid and Dreisaitl will remain on separate lines for game two because they're going to win game one. I think so. Yeah, I think they actually win the first two games at home. I really feel oh. strongly about that. Yeah. Interesting. 
I like that. All right, that was Ask Us Anything, brought to you by Rini Buclan, the shark of the park. And there you see the animation time for our play of the day, brought to you by Play Alberta. The playoffs are wild. We all know it. And this year, Play Alberta is making it even wilder. Make a deposit with the promo code GYB50 to snag $50, uh, $50 free sports bets with your next deposit. Get ready for unbeatable promotions throughout the playoffs. 10-plus odds boosts on every Oiler playoff game. Play Alberta is going to be all over this. Score a chance to win a pair of lower bowl or even exclusive suite tickets for an Oiler playoff game just by making a bet on an Oiler playoff game at playalberta.ca. But also, as always, passing on the message to play responsibly. Know your limits and stay within it. Bonus terms and conditions will apply. Struds, what do we got for the old play of the day today, my man? I'm going to uh, talk about the Colorado Avalanche coach, Jared Bednar. Uh, afterwards, the game asked about his goaltender, Quote of the day. about um, you know how he played, and he responded, probably needs to be better. <laughs> talk about <laughs> protecting your goalie, but not blowing smoke up anybody's ass. That uh, th th that's the legit. understatement of the day. The Play Alberta understatement of the day. <laughs> yeah. Probably needs to be better. Hey? That's a great line. Probably needs to be better. I love that. Like, what do you, well, you can't lie. Like, you can't say, oh, he was fine. Like, <laughs> you just say it like you see it. Probably needs to be better. Boom. You don't throw him under the bus, but everyone already knows the answer. Pretty obvious. That backup that, that finished the season, I think, wasn't even in the lineup tonight. He was sick or something, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Could you see them making a shift or do you challenge him and throw him right back in there, Georgie Five? I think, <laughs> I think you give him one more chance. Yeah? A short, short leash. I don't know. Might just be a collar, not even a leash. Not even a leash, yeah. All right, that was the play of the day, brought to you by our great friends over at Play Alberta. Zuby, great job tonight, buddy. I know you were a little out of practice, but you held it together. Uh, well job, sir. Struds, get some sleep, pal, and let's uh, chat late tomorrow night. Can't wait for a nice double overtimer. Yeah, it's going to be fun. Uh, Pierre Lebrun is in town. Uh, Jamie McLennan's also in town tomorrow. So look for our post game content on SportsCenter and TSN.ca. Pierre and I will be uh, rocking web hits through the day tomorrow as well. So we'll have tons of Oiler coverage for you on TSN.ca and on SportsCenter. We're ramping things up and we're raring to go. Big thanks to Sherwood Buick GMC, our title sponsors. Uh, we'll see what happens here in the Canucks game. Enjoy the game tomorrow and look forward to chatting afterwards. Cheers, everyone.